all the positions we've looked at so far have been on the bottom. Even though from the guard you've got a lot of advantages, it's an attacking position, we've been staying on the back, progressively getting better and better. Now we're going to start looking at the top positions. So again, still fairly neutral, still not out of danger, still not every, still not with everything stacked in our favour, but we're on top. We're moving back along the positions, but from the perspective of a guy who's been more aggressive, who's on top. Right? So, we had the, the guard positions. Now we're going to look at them from the top. So, if I'm in close guard now, here, he's on top. And uh, Sorry, I'm on top, my opponent's on the bottom. What do I need to do from here? So, the very first thing is... I need to be aware of what we covered before, which is he's looking to control me. He's looking to reach for my collar, grab my arms. He's going to be looking for his attacks, whether they're a sweep, where he's coming up on top, or a submission. Here. Let's assume for now that his legs are locked behind his back, which is what he's behind my back, which is what he's going for in his closed guard. Open guard is a different situation, and we'll cover that in a second. So I need to be aware that he's trying to control me. Right? So as his hands come up for control, I need to take them away from him. I don't want him grabbing hold of my collar, pulling me down, breaking my posture. I need to be upright. I want strong base if I can. I'm going to be up on my toes so I can drive to my posture upright. He's looking to break me forwards here. It's easier for him to work that way. And if I just use my lower back to try and pull up right here, it's going to be a lot weaker. I want to get my hips involved. So I'm actually driving up. You can see my legs are coming up rather than here. My legs aren't engaged. And it's all just in my back. Here, there's a drive with my legs. Right? So, what I'm looking to do, I need to break this. And before I do that, I need to make sure he's not controlling me. If I can, I'm going to take a grip with my arms. Right? With my elbows tucked in. Here. Because as soon as my elbows come away from my body, it becomes a lot easier for him to attack my arms right? and look for a lot more attacks. Now, if we're playing this grip fighting game where he's trying to control my arms and trying to control his, then it becomes who's faster, who's more coordinated with all these things. I don't want that. So if I now grab hold of his collar and he grabs my arm and tries to move it, it's going to be very, very hard for him to move it because he's anchored. Now, if he grabs hold of my arm here, while my arm's not anchored, I'm not holding on to anything, it becomes who's stronger. He can push and pull, and he can use his legs here to break me down as he pulls. And he's going to have a lot more leverage. He's going to have his whole body against my arm to be easier for him to pull me about. So I want to make sure I'm gripping as much as possible. Just as much as if I'm on the bottom, when I'm on top, I need to grip so I can take control over him. So I have my grips. We're going to look at a very, very simple guard opening here. I normally would do this standing, but we're going to have a look at this on the ground because it's a lot trickier to do it standing with this gun here. So, my job here is to control, keep my elbows in. I need to create pressure to separate his legs. Right? right now, it's very easy for me to do this because he doesn't hold on. But if his ankles were locked, fully closed behind my back here, it's going to be a lot harder for me to create pressure. So what I'm going to do here is, assuming this is all locked in tight, I hold, I keep my elbows in. I drive one knee back and I put it right up the middle, so it's right on his tailbone here. So here, my knee is on the outside, I pull it back, move across, and slide it up into his tailbone. Already, that's going to make it harder for him to pull me in. I need to make sure I keep the pressure down because otherwise he's just going to lift his hips and climb up the top. What I'm looking to do is wedge his hips flat, stop him moving, and I'm going to use my body to create this pressure going backwards. I'm going to switch around. So you can see on this side here, he's got his legs locked here. Right? I'm controlling pressure down on his hips. I bring my right knee back and slide it through the middle now. Now, it's hard for him to move and pressure him down so his hips aren't going anywhere. Now I need to create pressure going backwards. What 
a lot of people like to do from the situation, what a lot of people end up doing here. So put the knee through the middle, controlling, and then just push with their left with their arm. Right? Now that's not too bad. It will work sometimes. The problem is now it's my arm against their leg. And their leg should be stronger than my arm. The other thing is you'll notice that his leg is supported by mine, which means if I'm pushing down here, I'm essentially pushing into my own leg. This is a barrier that shouldn't be able to move anywhere here. What I want to do is actually move and use my whole body to create this pressure back just here. Here, I'm just pushing with my arms, pushing down this way. It might work, it might not. But if his legs are locked, it's going to be a lot harder. So what I want to do, my knee through the middle, blocking his hips from moving, I want to move my whole body backwards. So I can take a step and move, and you can see how my body travels from here all the way to here. And that whole body movement is going to help try and break his guard open. It's a lot more forceful than just using my arm. I use my arm to assist as well. So up here, his legs are locked. I move my whole body, and I push, and I keep his leg in this space here. Right, here, here, right, and if I do want to push, you'll notice as well that as I move my body, now there's a little gap here, so when I push down, I can actually push his leg into the space that my body is vacated, my leg is vacated, so now my pushes are actually going to do something, rather than just me pushing against my leg, I move my leg away, I'm pushing down into open space. So this is breaking the closed guard. It's a very, very important topic. Many, many ways to do this. Not an easy skill, but this is a nice little introduction to it.